So you've studied for months for your AWS Solutions Architect professional exam and now the big day is here. Or maybe you only studied for a few weeks or days or let's be real, maybe you didn't study at all. In this video, I'm going to give you exam day tips that will help you get through this beast no matter how much or how little you prepared. Even if you didn't study, these tips can help you avoid the most common mistakes and give you the best shot at passing. Let's get into it. Before we dive in, let me be brutally honest with you. If you don't have real AWS experience and you just barely passed the associate level exam by chance, you are not going to pass this exam, period. The AWS Solutions Architect Professional Exam is designed for people who've been in the trenches, who've actually built things in AWS, troubleshot issues, designed architectures, and lived through the complexities of cloud workloads. I'd say you need at least two, three years of solid, hands-on AWS experience before even attempting this exam seriously. Now, with that said, Hey everyone, I'm Emmer, a cloud architect with over 10 years of experience working across AWS and Azure. I personally passed the AWS Solutions Architect professional exam in just four weeks. But to be clear, I already had a solid foundation and years of hands-on AWS experience going in. Your situation might be different and that's totally okay. If you're curious about how I managed to pass in four weeks, I talk about it in another video. I'll drop the link here so you can check it out. This exam is no joke. It's long, it's mentally draining, and the questions are real world scenarios that test your technical depth, architectural judgment, and time management. So in this video, I'll walk you through my best exam day tips. The stuff that actually helped me stay focused, calm, and efficient for the full three hours. Let's quickly recap what you're up against. There's a total of 75 questions. Question types are multiple choice with one correct answer or multiple response, two or more correct answers. Time limit is 180 minutes or three hours and passing score is 750 out of 1000 or 75%. You're going to get a mix of well-known services and edge case scenarios, and you'll absolutely see topics that you did not prepare for. Let's talk about how to survive that. If you're taking the exam at home, and most people are these days, this part is critical. Do not check in for your exam until everything is perfect. What I mean with that is once you start the check-in process for the AWS exam, that's it. There is no turning back, no breaks, no standing up, no sneaky trips to the fridge, not even a quick dash for water or the bathroom. If you leave your chair, even for a second, the proctor will end your exam. I left my coffee just a few feet away in the kitchen thinking I'd grab it after checking in. Nope. That cup of motivation stayed out of reach the entire time and it completely threw me off. So be 100% ready before you check in. Get your coffee, water, snacks, glasses, whatever you need before you sit down. And if you're the kind of person who visits the bathroom often, maybe skip the water altogether before the test. You've been warned. Also, Turn off your phone and put it away. Take off your smartwatch if you have one and also put it away. Let your family or roommates know you're going into do not disturb or else mode. And if you have pets, relocate them temporarily unless you want your dog triggering an exam violation or jumping all over you or, you know, want to go play or something. Lock in. Eliminate every possible distraction and get ready for a three hour brain marathon. This exam is structured to mess with your head. 
you'll most likely get hit with some extremely hard questions right up front. Don't panic. This doesn't mean you're failing. It just means the exam is doing what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to rattle you. If the first five or 10 questions are hard, don't lose momentum. There are plenty of manageable questions later. Your job is to keep your energy level steady and not mentally burn out. This one made a massive difference for me. Here's how I tackle the 75 questions efficiently. Let's say in scenario A, you've never been or you've never seen this topic before. Don't waste time. Pick what seems like the most logical answer and move on. Do not mark it for review. You probably won't come back to it anyway. Example, a question on a service you literally never touched. Don't dwell, just answer and move on. Scenario B, you're familiar with the topic but unsure of the answer. Eliminate obvious wrong answers. Usually two are easy to discard. Reread the remaining two or however many are the remaining. Pick the one that's more aligned with best practices or if it's multiple choice, pick the two or three that make the most sense. You can mark it for review if it's truly 50-50, but don't get stuck. And scenario three, you know this topic called answer confidently and move on. No need to mark it. Don't overthink it. Don't review it. There's going to be plenty of other questions to review. You do not have time to second guess everything. Just answer and move on. You get three hours for 75 questions. That's roughly 2.4 minutes per question. Here's how I approach time. Easy ones, 30 seconds. Confusing but familiar, one to two minutes. Totally foreign, 10, 20 seconds. Answer and go. Don't waste time on questions you don't understand or you didn't prepare for or it's something completely new. 10, 20 seconds, answer and go. Time is your enemy here. If you spend too long on early questions, you'll run out of the gas in the second half of the exam. Only mark questions that you genuinely think you can answer better later. If it's a wild guess, don't mark it. If you're stuck between two solid options, go ahead and mark it, but move on fast. Marking too many questions just creates decisions fatigue later. Think about it. If you mark 30 or 40 questions out of 75, you will never go through 30 and 40 questions at the end of the exam. So only mark specific questions based on what we talked about so far. This exam doesn't just test your knowledge, it tests your judgment. So here are a few AWS principles to keep in mind as you answer questions. Always prefer managed services over self-managed. Choose solutions that are scalable, cost-effective, and resilient. Think multi-AZ, multi-region, and failover strategies. Don't reinvent the wheel. Use native tools whenever possible. This is where real-world experience pays off. The more you've worked with actual production environments, the more these answers will feel like second nature. Look, this exam is hard, but it's passable if you stay focused and play to the strategy game. Prepare your environment like your career depends on it. Also, manage your time like you're being charged for every second. Don't waste any time. Answer with AWS mindset, not your personal preference. And most of all, don't panic. Even the best architects feel unsure during this exam. Very few people, if any, can guess all 75 questions correctly. You only need 750 to pass, not perfection. Keep that in mind. So take a deep breath, trust your experience, and go crush it. If this helped you, hit that like button. It really helps the channel. Drop your exam stories or questions in the comments I try to respond to everyone. And if you want more real world AWS tips, cloud career advice, or guidance on passing tough certifications, subscribe and stick around. Thanks for watching and good luck with your exam. You've got this.